Welcome back outsiders. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different methods to tie the bowline knot, including this ultra fast method. So stick around. The bowline knot is a loop knot. It's very easy to tie, it's very versatile, and it's very strong when it's under load. It's one of the fundamental knots of the Boy Scouts, and the FAA even recommends using a bowline to tie down small aircraft. The bowline knot has been around for thousands of years. Archaeologists have found evidence of a bowline being used in the ship's riggings of ancient pharaohs, but the first mention of the bowline is in John Smith's 1627 work called The Sea Grammar where he actually called it a bowling knot, B-O-L-I-N-G. So that's where we get the, the term bowlin, not bowline or bowline, it's a bowlin. The bowlin knot is extremely strong and reliable when under load. And that's one of the pros and cons of the bowlin knot is when it's not under load, it has a tendency to be very easy to untie. The tag end will can work its way out and untie. So it's both a pro and a con. You can put a ton of load on the loop and still be able to untie it, but there are some circumstances where it could come untied if it's not under load. There's a few methods to prevent the bowline from coming undone, either putting a stopper knot or backing up your knot. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. I'll do a advanced bowline video where I show how to back this up. When you tie this knot, it reduces your rope strength by about a third. So your, your rope strength will only be about 66% of what it's rated for. So let's get into tying a couple bowlines. If you're new to knot tying, you may not be familiar with the different terms associated with a rope. I'll go over those very quickly. The shorter end is called the running end or working end and the longer end of the rope is called the standing end, or standing part. I'm going to introduce the overhand loop. It becomes handy when tying the bowline as well as other knots. To create the overhand loop, you take your running end and you loop it over the top of your standing part. The loop should be pointing up. As you can see, the loop is over the top of the standing part. I suggest practicing the loop several times. It will become second nature and come in handy when tying other knots. The first method to tie the bowline is the most traditional method and the method most people use to learn to tie the bowline. Start by taking the running end and you loop it over the top of your standing part to create a P. Then think of your running end as a rabbit. The rabbit comes out of the hole, around the tree, and back down the hole. Then you're going to pinch the running ends together. Grab your standing end and pull it tight. So let's do that one more time. Take the running end and loop it over the top of the standing part to form a P. Then we take our running end, our rabbit. He comes out of the hole, around the tree, back down the hole. Then we're gonna pinch both the ends of our running end. Grab our standing part and pull both of them tight to create our bowline. One way to speed up the process of tying the traditional method is to use that overhand loop. If you notice, that overhand loop was that P. If you take the running end, loop it over the standing part, it creates that P. Now, I'm going to take that rabbit, come out of the hole, around the tree, back down the hole, pinch, and pull it tight to form the bowline. The next method to tie the bowline is just a variation on the traditional method, speeding up the formation of that initial loop. The way I tie this is I pinch the running end between my index and middle fingers. And then I rotate my hand all the way around. Notice the running end is pointing down the standing part. And then I flip my hand and push the running end through. The rabbit is already out of the hole. I just need to go around the tree, back down the hole. Pinch the running end and pull the standing part to finish off that bowline. Let's do that method again. You can see we're just basically combining the step of creating the loop 
and bringing the rabbit out of the hole, speeding up the tying of the bowline. Take the running end between our two fingers, rotate our hand around, flip, and push that end through. If we do it right, our rabbit is out of the hole. We are just going to come around that tree and back down the hole, pinch, and pull it tight. This method is good to practice because it is fundamentally the same method used to tie a one-handed bowline. I will show it one more time a little bit quicker. Boom, we have our bowline. The final method to tie the bowline is my favorite and one of the quickest ways to tie that bowline. Here's where the overhand loop comes into play. We're gonna create that overhand loop. Here's our P that we saw before, and our overhand loop is facing upwards. Now we're gonna take that loop and place it on top of the standing part and pull a little bit of the standing part out. Then we're gonna come through the top of that loop and we're going to pinch the running end like before. We're gonna pull our standing part and pull our bowline tight. It is a very quick method to tie a bowline. Let's see that one more time. We have our rope. Take the running end, the short end. We're going to create that overhand loop and then we're gonna place that overhand loop on top of the standing part and pull it out. This is actually the first steps in making a Marlin spike hitch. Then we're gonna take the running end and pull it through the top of the loop. We're gonna pinch and then pull the standing part. So if you use this method to tie the bowline and you screw up a little bit, don't worry. You create your overhand loop and pull it through and get to this point and you don't know if you should go this way or through this way. It's okay. If you mess up and come through the other way, pinch it and pull it through. It'll create a left-handed bowline or a cowboy bowline. It's really the same knot, just has the tag end on the outside and it's debatable which is actually the stronger knot. The cowboy bowline will be fine for most applications. Don't worry too much if you tie it backwards. So I hope you like the three different methods of tying a bowline knot. In future videos, I'm gonna go over some of the more advanced ways to tie a bowline knot, including how to put a stopper knot or backing up your bowline, different methods to tie it around objects, and also how to tie it around yourself in a rescue scenario. And bonus, how to tie it with one hand. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button. If you wanna see other how-tos, gear reviews, outdoor adventures, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.